change, a coaching change, or no change at all. This is NFL Total Access. Welcome to NFL Total Access, presented by Lowe's. I'm MJ Acosta Ruiz, and we've got a lot to get into tonight. The NFC West is going to be so good down the stretch. A big game on Sunday. We'll tell you who wins it and who will win the division. Plus, it's Tuesday. No disrespect, but someone is about to get it. And we have football on Wednesday. Ravens at Steelers. That's where we begin today. We bring in Mike Garofolo, who joins us now as we get ready to finally see this one go down. Mike G. So, as of today, how do things stand with the Ravens? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, the Ravens are sitting on the plane. They're, they're getting ready to take off. They've been cleared uh, to travel to head to Pittsburgh. But I guess until that plane is in the air, and even then, I mean, until the ball is kicked off tomorrow, we'll continue to monitor this one uh, as the NFL is confident that they've gotten out of that window uh, where the virus uh, is incubating, but uh, we shall see once we get up to, to kickoff, once those final test results all come in, if this game is kicked off on time and the expectation as of right now is that it will. And that plane will take off and we will see football tomorrow at 3.40 Eastern time between the Ravens and the Steelers, a rocky week for the Ravens with all the COVID positives. Uh, they tried their best to get their walkthrough in and get their work in as we got closer to this game, uh, but certainly not the full week of practice that a team would like to have before a game. Meanwhile, the Denver Broncos quarterbacks, a storyline uh, that affected their game greatly the other day, uh, have all been cleared and taking off of the COVID-19 list. Drew Locke, Brett Rippon, and Blake Bortles expected uh, to return to practice, to action on Wednesday. Uh, the team also expected to sign Pat Shermer's son, Kyle Shanahan, as he's working his way through the COVID-19 protocols. But Vic Fangio saying they're still not going to technically quarantine a quarterback. They just want these guys to follow protocols, as they did not do leading up to this game. And that's why they were forced to play without a traditional quarterback the other day in their loss to the Saints. Just stick to the basics. Do what you got to do. All right, Mike, don't go far because we will be bringing you back in in just a little bit. Let's take a look now at the AFC playoff picture. The Steelers, of course, sitting pretty at the one seed undefeated. The Ravens at this point fighting to get to the postseason. Let's bring in Michael Robinson and LaDainian Thomas and LT. It's been a minute, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you, MJ. All right, let's get into this one because the first time this season, the Steelers and Ravens game definitely sort of favors more for the Steelers in this one. LT, is there a chance that you see here without Lamar Jackson that the Ravens could really sort of cause an upset of sorts? Well, there's always a chance, MJ, um, simply because these two teams are division rivals. These games are always close. And if you're the Steelers, you just have to look at the first game that you played between the Baltimore Ravens, where actually the Ravens dominated the Steelers. They had over 200 yards rushing. 200 of those uh, rush yards came between two running backs, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. And so if you're the Steelers, you still have to figure out how to stop what the Ravens do best. So that should be motivation alone. Even beyond Lamar Jackson not playing, think about this. Remember last year, week 17, guess who beat the Steelers? RG3. He played against them, and he beat them. So that, that should be even more motivation. Um, but at the end of the day, the Steelers have to come out ready to play, stump on them right away, don't give them any hope. And, and I, I think if they do that, then they'll be okay. You know what, LT? I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how this Baltimore Raven off Ravens offense looks with um, RG3 behind by, behind the center, with, with um, him knowing he's going to be the starter. Because, you know, when you just look at, you know, throwing the ball down the football field, I, I actually think RG3 has a bigger Rolodex of throws when you talk about explosive throws down the football field. What's, what's been the thing, what's been the knock on Lamar Jackson so far this year? His inability to be able to throw the ball down the football field and be explosive in the past game. Now, look, I'm not saying RG3 is going to go in there and run the same thing that uh, Lamar Jackson did and be the MVP of the league. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that maybe 
you know, Willie Sneed and, and, and guys on the outside, uh, Duvernay and guys on the outside get excited because it is a more accurate quarterback throwing the football down the football field. And I know Pittsburgh, as you said, uh, LT, I know Pittsburgh has a bad taste in their mouth because they did dominate running the football in the first game. And last year, RG3 did get a win the last game of the season. Yeah, we can stick our noses up at RG3 all of a sudden just because Lamar is not in action. And also, guys, we have heard that the Steelers players be very outspoken about the postponements and the rescheduling of this game. But it's not like the Ravens aren't itching to get out there and really show what they got and how hard they've been working uh, this season as well. So one of those matchups where a lot is on the line, a lot of emotions, too. All right, LT and M. Rob, thanks. And you know who's been all over this coverage? Our Aditi Kinkawala. She has more on this game. This Raven Steelers game is finally about to kick off and we can turn to discussing the actual matchup. And so the Steelers are preparing for Robert Griffin III at quarterback. Cam Hayward said that there's nothing to be taken lightly there because of course it was Griffin who was the last quarterback to beat the Steelers week 17 of a year ago. And even though our Tom Pelissero has said that Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins will indeed be available to play tomorrow, should they travel, well, the Steelers have been preparing for Gus Edwards, and Gus Edwards has had two tremendous starts against the Steelers, averaging nearly 110 yards an outing. Now, as for the Steelers, they are focusing on scheme and not individual personnel. As head coach Mike Tomlin said, it's about personality. And if there are any two teams that know each other's personalities, it is certainly the Steelers and Ravens. In case you missed it last night, here's a look back at Seahawks Eagles. Russ looks, now he's gonna let it fly. Got a man out there, Metcalf makes the catch at the five. He's down at the one yard line. Nobody throws the deep ball like Russell Wilson. Russ is gonna lay it up over the top to David Moore, who makes the catch, it is in. Touchdown, Seahawks. On third and 13, and Wentz is gonna go down. He gets hammered. That's just a poor job by the offensive line. Another terrible possession. Wentz stops, throws to the end zone, it's intercepted. No eagle receiver was anywhere nearby. The handoff inside to Carson. He finds a hole across the 10, down to the five. He's driving, he's driving, he's in. Touchdown, Seahawks. Chris Carson, holy smoke, carried half of the Eagles defense on his back and scores. All right, so now this is a look at the NFC playoff picture. Philly held the keys to the division kingdom because of that tie there. But with that loss last night, Seattle uh, firmly placed uh, there in the second seed. The Eagles now on the outside looking in at the playoff picture. All right, let's bring in the guys Mike Garofolo, Sean O'Hara, and D'Angelo Hall with me now. Now, we've talked a lot about Carson Wentz, and yes, we will get into that in a minute. But is Duck Peterson really on the hot seat here to Mike Garofolo? I'll start with you. MJ, I believe so. Um, and I know that that kind of sounds crazy if you just think about the team winning their first Super Bowl in franchise history and then making the playoffs every year since then leading up to now. But uh, I'll be honest with you, in, in talking to team officials, nobody can rule anything out because Jeffrey Lurie is really upset. And by the way, those conversations that I had with team officials were before last night's game. So last night's game really didn't help things. You know, and I would ask this question as we were going through the season, everybody said, come on, they're not gonna fire Doug. Uh, not with the track record of the last couple of years, but now nobody's sure. And you could see on Jeffrey Lurie's face when the cameras caught him late in the game that he is upset with the direction of this team, with the direction of how his quarterback is playing, and the fact that on offense, they are at times a complete mess, and I'm sure, Sean O'Hara, you're watching this game last night, and you're agreeing with me on that one, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not that broken up about it, you know, because the G-men are in first place. But, look, Doug Peterson's a heck of a coach. And, you know, look, a couple of years ago when they went on that run and won the Super Bowl, they did it with a backup left tackle and a hell of a run game. And that, to me, is where this offense looks totally different. So, no doubt, Doug Peterson, he knows that as a head coach, the fire is going to come his way when you're not winning football games and certainly in a division that is absolutely winnable. But I go back to even last year when Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz were able to will the Eagles to winning the division without their wide receivers again. It was Zach Ertz and Carson Wentz show that carried them to that divisional win. So um, I, I think Doug Peterson knows that, you know, look, the fire is getting a little bit warm under the seat, but uh, that, that's kind of how it is when you're a head coach of a team in Philly. 
Yeah, Sean, and you talked about that pressure under Doug Peterson's seat getting a little bit hot. Um, you know, we've heard Jalen Hurts' name mentioned a lot. And, you know, I don't know if Jalen Hurts is the answer. This is a bad Philadelphia team. And, you know, when I just think about watching that game last night, you know, through the course of the first half, it was 14-6. Uh, Philly had had a whole bunch of three and outs. And then on one drive before half, they roll out 15 plays and score a touchdown and then miss the extra point. And so when I watch this Philly team, it's so frustrating. So if I'm Jeffrey Lurie, yes, I'm a little upset because it's the product on the field. I've played against Carson Wentz and seen him dice defenses up. And then when I watch him play now, it looks as though he's forcing things. He's regressed a little bit. He can't play defense, obviously, you know, and help stop some of those deep balls. But I tell you what, Carson Wentz is just not making smart decisions. And I don't want to absolve him. I understand there's a lot of broken pieces around him, but that play right there, he stirred down uh, 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 Jamal Adams in the flats in a cover three. Jamal was already walked down. That's football one-on-one. -on -one. High school kids can make that read. And so Carson Wentz definitely isn't seeing things that he should be seeing, seeing at this progression in his career. Guys, not to add to the frustration, that seemed to be the theme of the chat here. But when you're looking at this NFC East uh, division, to Sean O'Hara's point, his G-men in first place, there have been four lead changes in this division already this season. So very yeah. winnable, which begs the question, what is going on? All right, guys, thanks. This is a look <laughs> at what's going up next this week on Total Access. So Wednesday, we'll have exclusive postgame coverage after Ravens and Steelers. Then on Thursday, our Hall of Fame running backs, LT and TD, will count down their top running backs heading into Sunday. Then Friday, you've got to be on the list, right? Vikings running back Dalvin Cook joins us, and we're picking games and putting someone on upset alert. As we prepare for the Rams and the Cards, the NFL Total Access Game of the Week, much will be said about Kyler Murray. I just never felt like we were going to lose. I ain't going to count. A player as captivating. You've got to be joking me. As he is confusing. Murray's hit and sacked. He took a loss in three of the last four games. The one win took a miracle. He's gotten some MVP buzz. And yet, in the two games he played his best against the Dolphins and the Panthers, his team lost. What can we believe? 